Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Big up to every single one of you that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that. We are halfway through the final international break of the year. Thank the Lord, because this has been one of the most boring ones on record. Although I feel like I say that, I think it's a little bit biased. I think it's also because it's the only time in ages where I'm actually looking forward to seeing Chelsea return. Last season, it was like, yes, bring me the international break. I get a break from this chaos. The season before, same energy. This time, nah, bring Chelsea back. You look at the run of games that we got coming up as well. Yeah, I want my club back. Bring me Chelsea Football Club because, look, bar Villa and Spurs, I don't see any game that's relatively difficult for us. Yeah, clip it if you want. If we don't win those games, it is what it is. But. We are here to discuss the Leicester-Chelsea game because there is a certain midfield dilemma that we need to discuss in today's video. So, we're going to get into all of that. But before we start, as always, hit the like, subscribe. Super thanks if you guys want to get involved with the Super Chat Lottery. Anybody who drops a super thanks or a super chat, you guys are in with a chance of winning a free jersey from Jerseys FC. And also, CAA Mafia, if you're watching this video, message me. Message me. You won the lottery. so. We need to give you a free kit. Let us know, brother. Let us know. But yeah, let's get into the news. Let's get into news for today. So Enzo Maresca has a midfield conundrum for the Saturday 12.30 kickoff against Leicester City. Lavia has missed both of, of the games for Belgium in international duty after complaining about a hamstring injury, whereas Enzo and Caicedo don't return back until Thursday. We know this dilemma with the pair of them. Every time they go on international duty, they come back around the Thursday because of the timing of when Ecuador and um, Argentina play. And yeah, we kind of just have to part with that one. Usually it's not that much of a problem. Like the last international break, we played Liverpool on a Sunday 4.30, which was relatively easier to get the players back in for. This time we got the Saturday 12.30. We, we, got, we got stuck with the early kickoff. And that's what's creating a little bit of a problem for us. Like, it's a good thing that Lavia hasn't played, but now we have to try and gauge where his fitness level is at by the time we get to Saturday. And he's the most injury-prone midfielder out a lot. So his situation and his welfare, like they've said in the tweet as well, is going to be of the utmost importance compared to all three of the midfielders that we're talking about. But in terms of Enzo and in terms of Caicedo, Enzo is playing Wednesday at midnight. Um, Caicedo is playing Tuesday at 11 p.m. So both of them realistically would be getting back to England around Wednesday evening UK time. And then it's about just getting themselves back to speed, getting the, their sleeping patterns in the right order and assessing where they are with the 48 hours leading to kickoff. Now, I would assume that Caicedo would be good enough to start just because like he's the fittest out of the lot. He's had the least injury issues out of the lot. He's seemed fine coming back from international duty and in past games. Enzo already has question marks of whether he can get into our strongest lineup or not. So, yeah, my biggest concern would be Caicedo. But I also, like, that's the biggest concern if he can't play. And I would assume that he is able to play. Whether he plays a full 90 or whether we have to wheel him off in 60 minutes is a discussion for Friday. But as for now, like, I would assume Caicedo would be able to start. And whether Enzo or Lavia starts really just depends on their fitness. Now, if anything, I could potentially see a similar scenario where you have Enzo either play the 60 minutes with Caicedo or you have one of them come off the bench. But we also have readily available options if it comes down to it. Like Renato Vega, Dewsbury Hall, Chukumeka, Cassidy are all available options that we can look at if we are in an emergency situation where two of the three cannot play. Now, ideally, if it comes down to us looking at our bench, I would like to see like a Caicedo and Vega potentially, because Vega could still drop deep a little bit, give Caicedo the license to roam forward, because we all know of his qualities in the defensive third and the midfield third. This guy is a brilliant passer. This guy is great at building up play, at um, driving the ball forward and beating players 1v1. So as long as Caicedo plays, 
I'm relatively comfortable. Relatively comfortable. It would just be a, it would be a case of Caicedo and who, be it Renato Vega to give him less defensive responsibilities. Or it could even be Caicedo playing the deeper role and you give one of Dewsbury Hall and, or Chakumeka an opportunity to play. It could be one of those situations. Now, I don't think it'll be Chakumeka because Chakumeka barely gets into the team for Conference League games. This guy is dying for minutes. But Dewsbury Hall, he's playing at, against his former club, at his former club. You could potentially see him get given the nod for this sort of game just because you'd expect him to be up for a game against his former club. So maybe you could see Dewsbury Hall as an emergency option. But really and truly, I think it will end up being Caicedo starting, Enzo coming off the bench, all dependent on Lavia. But we don't even know what Lavia's situation is. Apparently, it aggravated his hamstring issue aggravates a little bit more while he was at Belgium. So it all remains to be seen with him. But it is very speculative. It is very speculative. So it all remains to be seen. But guys, let me know in the chat. Would you be willing to see or would you be eager to see one of Dewsbury Hall, Cassidy or Renato Vega starting next to an Enzo or a Caicedo? Bit of a layered question, I know. But let me know you guys' thoughts down in the chat. And yeah, we're, we're going to have to see what happens on Saturday. I'm confident against Leicester City, regardless of who we play. But like, obviously, you're going to be a little bit more confident if your best midfielders are playing. If Lavia's there, brilliant. If Caicedo's there, brilliant. Enzo, this should be the game for him to cook. This should be one of the games where Enzo should be feeling a lot more comfortable um, playing football. So, yeah, all remains to be seen. There was one more bit of news for today as well. Fabrizio Romano has spoken on the Nkunku situation and he said, Chelsea are not entertaining any offers for Christopher Nkunku. He is still considered a very important player, but Chelsea believe the situation will change in the second half of the season um, due to the schedule and potential injuries. Manchester United have not begun any contact for Nkunku, which makes total sense because all United did was inquire. So I don't really expect them to have initiated any talks or to take it any further than that. Now, I also think Nkunku's situation does change. Like, we have nine fixtures in December. Conference League is done. Everything from mid-December will be all Premier League games. And he should get opportunities in the Christmas period to show why he should be starting more Premier League games. And also, Nicholas Jackson is a yellow away from a suspension. We all know he's liable to get a silly card for beefing somebody. As long as it's after Tottenham away, I don't really care too much like that. But he's going to get a yellow card within this run in December. Book it right now. Easiest bet you could ever make. So, Nkunku will get the opportunities. Be it at strike, be it at number 10 he will get the opportunities to show why he should be playing more for us. Whether he takes those opportunities or not is a completely different question. But I guess it's good to see an early statement from Chelsea. It's good to see that we're not entertaining offers for him, even though I never really thought we would be. And we'll have a much better assessment of where Nkunku is at Chelsea and if he has a realistic future at Chelsea within the next month or two, because I would expect him to get minutes and he'll get minutes against favorable opposition too. So if you can't make the most of those minutes, uncomfortable conversations might have to be had. But until then, we just have to wait. And Gunku's still getting minutes, so he should be relatively satisfied. Like It's not just warming benches week in and week out. It's just a Premier League thing for him. But we need to utilize him a little bit more off the bench. I've spoken about it before. We bring him on way too late in games that have any sort of impact. Bring him on around the 60, 70 mark a little bit more. We might see a little bit more from him. We might see him grow into games a little bit more than what we've already been seeing. So, yeah, it remains to be seen what happens with Christopher and Kunku. But that is it for the news today. I mean, I saw some random link to Brian and Buemo because. The one thing we need is more right-wingers. But yeah, we're linked to Embuemo. Sure. Fikai's net. I've heard of them before, but don't really rate the source like that. Embuemo's still cold. Brilliant player, but another right-winger? Really? Not too sure about that one. Not too sure about that one. But guys, here's the end of another uh, video. I was going to say preview. It's not really a preview. That'll be later on in the week. So keep a lookout for that. 
But yeah, until then, guys, big up to every single one of you. Hit the likes, subscribe, all of that crap. Bun potch. And yeah, up the chels. Up the chels.